Hi there, I'm Tucker Balch. I am CTO of Lucena Research. I'm going to give you a guided tour of QuantDesk, our cloud-based decision support system. Now, when you first come to our website, you'll be presented with a login screen here. I've already entered my information, and I'll go ahead and log in. Once you log in, you now have access to our platform, QuantDesk. And each of the major modules are listed along the top here and you can switch between them by clicking on the tab up at the top. Now home base is portfolios and that's where we have lists of our various portfolios. You can create your own with this new button. If you were to click new it would ask you for instance what assets you wanted in that portfolio. You could also upload them from a CSV file if you wanted to. Now here you see the assets in the portfolio we're looking at. If you click on one of them, you can see more detail. Here's the performance of American Express over the last few years. And all of our modules are laid out in the same way. You select which group of assets you want to work with over here, tabular result here, and then a graphical result down here. Now, let's step through these one by one. Let's take a look first at our forecaster. So we'll forecast one month into the future and we'll use three months of look back data. We click on forecast and QuantDesk goes to work. Now here tabularly you see the forecast for each of the assets. We can sort them for instance here we think of the members of the Dow that Caterpillar is going to go up the most. Down here is the graphical representation of that. This diagonal line is our forecasted change. This vertical line right here is today. And the upper and lower bounds here are our confidence bounds on that forecast. Now when we make a forecast, we give you two ratings here. One is confidence and the other is backtest score. Confidence goes from one star up to five stars. One star is our least confident forecast and five stars of course are most confident. Uh, the backtest score represents how good our forecaster has worked for this particular asset recently. So in this case, uh, we only have one star for Caterpillar, so it hasn't worked too well. Let's take a look at Travelers and see if we have a better backtest score. Yeah, five stars. So that means recently, over the last three months, that our forecasts for Travelers, using our machine learning technique, has done well. Let's take a look now at Optimize. The Optimizer takes a portfolio that you've got already and it recommends perhaps different allocations to the assets that you've got. So we're starting here with the Dow 30 portfolio and equally weighted we've got 3.3 percent allocated to each asset. And down here you can see the performance of that portfolio historically. Now, with the optimizer, you can select a few different configuration options, whether you want it to be long only or long short or short only, uh, what your risk level is. And here, for instance, you can select from conservative to aggressive. If you select moderate, it's going to try and find the maximum sharp ratio portfolio. Look back is how many months of data you want to look back to make this calculation and then we can click optimize and see what it recommends. So here's our result. You can see the allocations recommended for each asset. You can also look at the transactions that would be necessary to get you there. So which assets you have to sell and how many shares and so on. And uh, down here you can see graphically the change in the performance of the portfolio historically. So blue here is what the portfolio was doing previously before the optimization. And orange is how it would have performed if you had moved into these allocations at the beginning of the look back period. And over here is a summary of 
the change in each uh, major criteria for our portfolio. So we went from a sharp ratio of 0.45 to a sharp ratio of 4.85. And again, remember this is look back. Uh, you can also look at this uh, chart that shows you a scatter chart where each asset is listed here as a green dot, so Caterpillar, JP Morgan, and so on. Uh, the horizontal axis here is risk or standard deviation of daily returns, and the vertical axis is daily returns. The hedger recommends additional assets to add to the portfolio that will preserve the return that you've been seeing, but also reduce risk. Now the hedger can recommend short positions or long positions or long and short. Now most people think that a hedge is only a set of short recommendations, but indeed sometimes it's worthwhile to add long positions. And in some cases, depending on the type of portfolio you have, you may not be able to short. So the hedger can find even long positions to reduce that volatility. Now again, we select which portfolio we want to work with over here on the left, and then we configure our hedge over here in this configuration panel. Now I'm not going to go through all of these options because it takes a little bit too much time, but we'll just set up a standard hedge here where we want to be uh, short only, we want to preserve return, we'll use three months of data, and so on, and we'll see what uh, comes back. So again, we have our tabular result here. And as you can see, the original portfolio was here in blue, and our hedged portfolio is here in orange. And as you can see, it's much less volatile. Uh, we've preserved the return we had gained over that time period. So these are the five assets that it wants to add as short positions to the portfolio. It tells you the allocation to each one, and you can look at the transactions that would be necessary to get you there as well. Let's take a look at the Replicate tab. What our replicator does, our portfolio replicator, is it takes as input the time series of some fund or asset that you want to recreate. So as an example, you might punch in the symbol name for a mutual fund or some index and ask the system to try and reproduce it. So let's try as just an experiment, let's put in XLE, which is an ETF representing the energy sector. Now we can give it the, uh, as a universe to pick from, the S&P 500, and then ask it, okay, what are the 10 top positions in this ETF XLE? You might wonder, okay, you know, why don't I buy XLE itself? Why do I want to know what's in it? Well, this is just an, an experiment to show you that it can figure out what's in it. Now, a real use case for this might be to ask it, okay, what's in this hedge fund? What's in that hedge fund? What's in that mutual fund? And it will tell you the leading assets in each of these funds. And you could take a look at those, for instance, and say, okay, this asset seems to be in a lot of those funds. Maybe that's a good investment. Anyways, here's what it comes up with for XLE, which is the energy ETF. And we'll sort by weight. And you can see here, it's got Chevron, Schlumberger, Exxon, this energy corp, that energy corp. In other words, it's focusing on energy companies. So it's finding the right thing. So there's many uses perhaps for this replication engine, uh, this is just one. I want to show you now our event analyzer. This is one of our most powerful modules. Now what the event analyzer does is it lets you take a look at stock screens, for instance, things like limits on PE ratios and market cap and so on. In other words, things you might use in a stock screener that tell you which stocks today meet certain criteria. Stock screeners don't tell you how well those screens worked in the past. So what you can do with the event analyzer is you can list 
factors, and we've got 450 of them. We've got fundamental factors, we've got technical factors, we've got proprietary data feeds, we've got macroeconomic factors. Anyways, you can pick from all of those 450 factors and say, okay, I want all the stocks that meet this criteria and that criteria and that criteria, and it'll tell you which stocks meet that criteria. But not only that, you can go back in time and you can see which stocks historically met the criteria, and then it'll tell you how they performed going forward. So you can go back in time <clears throat> and see how well that screen would have worked if you had invested in the stocks that met that criteria. So here's an example. Uh, this one is one that I've <clears throat> made up already, Sharp Ratio, and from one of our proprietary data feeds called Psych Signal. And those two combined with thresholds find certain stocks that met those criteria historically. So this table shows you historically which stocks met those criteria and on which dates. And not only that, it shows you over here how they performed going forward. And as you can see, there's many that met those criteria. In fact, there were 12,000 that met this criteria over the dates uh, <clears throat> November 5th, 2015 to February 5th, 2016. Now we can look at this graphically as well. We get a heat map here that shows us by market sector and subsector how things performed. And as, as you can see, the green areas are those, that those sectors and subsectors that performed well, red not so well. Uh, we can look at this by market cap, or we can look at it by how many events occurred within each of those sectors. Now, the more important chart is down here, which shows us as of the day of the event going forward, how well did things perform? And this middle line here is the mean performance, and the upper and lower lines are standard deviations. Now, this one was not particularly exciting. In fact, you can see on average, over 21 days, we saw about a 0.53% return. Now, one of the really cool things about our system is we can ask the system to find us additional factors that if we add them to the screen will give us better performance. We click Optimize Indicators and it'll find those indicators that help us do that. Okay, our system has assessed all 450 indicators in our system, and it's ranked them according to which ones, if we select them, will give us the biggest boost in return. So you can see each indicator here by its name, and I'm going to go ahead and click here and add that indicator to our list of indicators and see how it improves the resulting performance. Okay, we've got the result back now. One thing you can notice here is in our heat map, uh, we see a lot more green, which means this uh, new event description is working better for us. If we scroll down here to this chart, we can see that uh, on average, after 21 days, we see now a mean return of 2.26%. That's way better than what we were seeing before. Now, this is a study in sample, and uh, of, of course, if we iterate in sample, we can do better and better and better. The real test is, how does it work in a back test? How does it work out of sample? And that's what our back test module is for. We can back test any of our modules. Let's take, for instance, a look at back testing the optimized module. Now we select our portfolio that we want to back test, just like before over here. Uh, but now we can select many new options for backtesting, like how much funds do we want to start with, over which period do we want to backtest, how frequently do we want to rebalance the portfolio, and so on. Uh, so the, all those criteria are available here. We even include transaction costs, like what slippage do you anticipate, what it, what's your commission structure, and so on. And then we can click backtest optimize and it'll backtest for us. So now it's going back in time. It's saying, uh, what did I know back then? How would have I invested back then? It simulates investing in those stocks and then 
carries forward a month, rebalances, and so on. Now, we might not want to wait for this so you can process in the background and then go forward and do whatever else you wanted to do. Uh, and you can check back here on the job queue and see how the various back tests you've got running are doing. So that one we were working on is still working. Uh, but let's take a look at one of our earlier back tests. Here we'll take a look at uh, this one. Click on results. And you get this uh, summary screen to start with. It shows you uh, <clears throat> your benchmark here in blue and the performance of your strategy in orange. Now, the thing to notice here is uh, they've both provided about the same return, but our strategy is much lower volatility. And uh, those factors are uh, listed over here. You can see, for instance, the sharp ratio of our strategy is 1.49 compared to 0.93 for our benchmark. Now we have a much more detailed report. You can take a look over here, and it shows you many, many more statistics, uh, like uh, sharp ratio by year, um, annualized return, annualized volatility, and so on. Now you can also see on each trading day in history what the transactions were and what were the allocations across all the assets it invested in. This is reported for every trading day in the back test, so you can see what your strategy might have been in on any particular day. So that brings to a close my introduction for you to QuantDesk. And of course, if you need any help or need any more details, we are glad to help you just pick up the phone. We also have tutorials and lots of videos on our website. So we hope you'll give QuantDesk a try and get in touch with us if you have any problems. Best of luck and happy trading.